Welcome on day three of InnoTribe at Cybos, and this morning is all about innovation capabilities. We also have a new gadget, and Barry is wearing one of those GoGo Pro cameras. So for the people on live stream, we are going to get you now pictures from within the audience. Hayden has a lot of new, fresh thinking, as Peter said, about what makes a company innovative. But we wanted, before we gave you that, we wanted to take a pulse from you guys. Who do you think the most innovative companies are? Who do you think the top three innovative companies are of all the logos that are here, and why? Good morning, everyone. So, uh, people got it kind of right, but let me tell you why, why we made these decisions, what well, research went into it. About two years ago, we, we got access to 5,000 companies across eight stock markets. And we had the innovation reputation scores of each one of these. So if you imagine all the data on all the companies across eight stock markets, you can actually tag the sentiments around those companies. And we took particularly the, the, sentiment, the sentiments that related to innovation. And we took the small cap and, and the large cap companies from that list. And then we analyzed in detail the top 100. And those who said Nike, you got it right. Nike was the top. So let's look at Nike and, and GE quickly, just to say some of the things that they're doing that are really, really important because they, they illustrate a structural change in the company. Of course, Nike traditionally makes shoes, and as you all know, over the last 10 years, it's converted into a data company. So most of what it tries to do around its athletic wear now is to create data or allow customers to create data, upload that data, share and compare and create community around data. Actually, Nike is one of the first companies to use 3D printing, and it uses 3D printing on the soles of some of its customized shoes. It's the future lies with a thing called computational design, is that GE is a company with $150 billion of forward contracts with its customers, but it will deal with you. It will deal with any individual, because it sees the future in this very atomized way that the kind of things that are going to make G the GE of the future could be anybody, and it's not prepared to take the risk of missing that, that single opportunity that might be out there to do what somebody in GE did 100 years ago. But what I'm trying to measure is what it takes to be able to change. Uh, and so to do that, I constructed uh, an index. It's about 40 questions, and it's trying to measure inputs. It's focusing on structural change, and it's focusing on trying to understand the company's ability to change. In the finance study we did for uh, Swift, we took 150 companies, and again, we tried to take those that seemed to have the highest reputation innovation. Do you make use of the latest IT business techniques like DevOps? Uh, people will talk about Agile, but the, the leading edge companies have gone beyond Agile to DevOps. Are you doing business through LinkedIn, not are you on LinkedIn or Facebook? but do you actually transact or sell through those channels? And are any of your executives regarded as thought leaders in your industry? So those are the kind of questions that we ask. And what we're trying to get at is the shift from an old business model to a new business model. I find, actually, when I talk to banks, they often talk about manufacturing and distribution. I was talking to one of the big investment houses here, and I was absolutely astonished to hear somebody talk about manufacturing in finance. It just blew me away. Do you invest in new foundational capabilities? The answer in about 65% of the cases was no. We would never use new foundational capabilities as a metric for investment. So you're saying you want to change as an organization, but you're not prepared to invest in people's capabilities to do something differently. But what banks probably lack is a dialogue between IT and business. I, I, I suspect there are a lot of IT departments um, who have very strong ideas now, I can't say for sure, but they're not getting the right interaction with the business leaders. In terms of the bridge between innovation and standard thinking, I think this particular talk is probably the best bridge because I think it's hard for people to think about regulation and innovation. And I think we have to bridge it better to have people that have more of a traditional mindset to even have receptor cells for this conversation. So I'm, I'm, I'm finding it tragic, actually, that, that this room isn't full and that we didn't start with this conversation. Um, and so I'm wondering if we can have a, an encore presentation and what we can do to, to literally bring people in. And I look forward to, hopefully, the slides and the research. And I thank you. I'm done. In fact, uh, two comments. The first comment on a serious note. And, uh, so I've attended a number of sessions and all. 
if only i have attended this session first and the other sessions later on probably it would have opened up thinking in totally different way very transformative way 